The bill is conducted in the House. I don't have any more good stories. Members are considering a $1.9 billion bill for congressional operations, Rules including will now funding come to for the Library of Congress, to, uh, General Accounting Office, and Government Printing Office. Rule and the, the Rules Committee must file this bill before the House recesses for this calendar day. Chairing the committee is Democratic Congressman Joseph Moakley of the, Massachusetts. Uh, chair will be in receipt of a motion. Mr. Derrick of South Carolina. Mr. Chairman, I move the committee grant a rule providing one hour of general debate equally divided and controlled by... Mr. Chairman, I move the committee grant a rule providing one hour of general debate equally divided and controlled by the chairman and ranking minority member of the Appropriations Committee. Clause 2 of Rule 21 is waived against all provisions in the bill. The rule makes in order only those amendments printed in the report to accompany the rule to be considered in order and manner specified in the report with debate time also specified in the report. The amendments are not subject to amendment or considered as read and are not subject to a demand for a division of the question. All points of order are waived against the amendments in the report. The chairman of the committee of the whole is permitted to postpone consideration of a request for a recorded vote on any amendment and to reduce to five minutes the time for voting after the first of a series of votes. Finally, the rule provides one motion to recommit or one motion to recommit with or without instructions if offered by Representative Young of Florida or a designee. Okay. You've heard the motion, gentlemen from South Carolina. Mr. Speaker. No. Go ahead. Okay, Mr. Chairman, just Mr. Uh, before we, uh, we make a uh, series of motions, I just... Um, I just have to point out once again that um, the rule that is before us is going to deny some 30 members from being able to offer uh, what I consider to be significant amendments. Uh, we have to keep in mind that this is the legislative appropriation bill. There is, uh, we do not have, like other committees, uh, we do not have uh, an authorizing committee. Consequently, no bill comes before the Congress every year to allow uh, for many of us, uh, especially the 112 or 13 or so now new members of this body, both Democrats and Republicans, to offer amendments dealing with congressional reform. Uh, Mr. Dreyer probably will have more to say about this in a few minutes, but uh, uh, I was hoping that uh, we would be able to take this rule, uh, this bill to the floor with an open rule which would allow any member to uh, offer uh, the traditional striking motions to try to reduce any part of the legislative branch uh, uh, appropriation bill. And that not only includes uh, <laughs> members and their personal staff, it, it includes all of the standing committees of the Congress. It also includes the General Accounting Office, the Congressional Budget Office, the Library of Congress, and all of the other uh, uh, agencies that come under our jurisdiction. Uh, when you analyze the amendments that are being allowed here to, tonight, uh, if we were to pass this rule, uh, there are some 30 some amendments that aren't going to be allowed. And the fact of the matter is that this bill is some 5% higher than last year's appropriations. And because of that, we certainly are not setting an example. Uh, we are asking the uh, administration and all of the other branches of government to uh, reduce their uh, payroll and their uh, uh, number of employees by some 270,000, and yet uh, we are not doing anything significantly ourselves. And I know the argument can be made that in the last several years that, uh, uh, that we have been attempting to, to make some inroads, but uh, the truth of the matter is, other than this particular committee that you and I uh, serve on and the rest of us, uh, the rest of these committees have gone up. Uh, the, uh, their, uh, their total allocation is more today than it was four years ago. Uh, that's not true of this committee, but we have bit the bullet. And uh, I just think that we have to set the example. This rule does not do that. And uh, uh, hopefully we would be able to go to the floor and uh, under the normal uh, uh, traditional open rule that would allow every member to exercise his right and her right to uh, control the purse strings of this, uh, of this government. That's what the House of Representatives uh, was established to do, uh, setting it off from the Senate and the other body. We are elected every two years uh, for that very reason that we are to be responsible in controlling the purse strings of this Congress, and we just are not doing it. Uh, having said that, I would uh, yield to the chairman of the, uh, the co-chairman of the uh, 
Congressional Task Force that the Speaker appointed well, to reform the House. Uh, actually, well, when, let me yield. You've had the time. We'll go on the other. We'll play it this way. Is that all right? If that's what you'd like, Mr. Chairman, that's perfectly well, all right. Thank you. Then I would just uh, yield back the balance of my time temporarily. Uh, Mr. Derrick, do you have a second? Uh, I just merely reemphasize what I said earlier today. Oh. Mr. Quillen. Who is it, the President on the phone? Or? Mr. Chairman, I move that we make an open rule. The amendment that I propose provides for one hour open rule for the consideration of H.R. 4454, the Legislation Branch Appropriation Act of Fiscal Year 1995. Clause 2 and 6 of Rule 21 are waived against provisions of the bill. Finally, the rule provides for one motion to recommit. And you know, Mr. Chairman, this legislative appropriation bill involves all of the members of the House. It seems ridiculous to me that we should bring this measure to the floor under a restricted rule. Why? I can't understand why. The members deserve to be heard. It involves all of us. And I think if they have a difference of opinion, then the amendments you're going to make an order under the rule that we're, we're tying their hands, we're putting a, something around their ability to speak and we're hog tying them. I think it's ridiculous that we should do this. So I insist on an open route. Would the gentleman yield? I'd be glad to yield. Well, uh, this would report that that call I just received was not from the president. It was from uh, Bill Young, who is the ranking Republican on the Legislative Appropriations Subcommittee. And he informed me that this piece of paper we have before us here uh, is far from what uh, he had uh, attempted to negotiate and had uh, agreed to with uh, the chairman of the subcommittee, Mr. Fazio, and he suggests that we oppose this rule. Mr. Chairman. I thank the gentleman for yielding. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Billinson. I, I just wanted to point out, Mr. Mr. Chairman, we, we've been... Press the button now. Yeah, I have, thanks. Um, just so, just so members are aware that the proposed cuts that, that are listed here represent the possibility of $177 million worth of cuts, which is over 9% of the reported bill that's before. So there are major cuts involved. There are, as members may have noted, three Democratic amendments, three Republican amendments, and six bipartisan amendments. So I think it's been done in a very fair and bipartisan way. And I think we've, we've allowed the possibility of, of most of the important and, and major and most thoughtful cuts, if I may say so, because as, as the chairman knows, he and I were sitting here for a good portion of the time today as for some of the other members. Um, and some of, the, some of the proposals were far more thoughtful than others. Most of the really thoughtful ones, with the exception, of course, of our friend Mr. Gosses, uh, are here, I think, before us. And I would urge support for this. Well, and as the uh, member knows that uh, there were cuts made in the committee before, on franking uh, before it even came out of the uh, the uh, committee. Exactly, and it would have been easier if the committee had come with a you know with a larger amount and, and offered to, or we made an order larger cuts. Yet it would have looked better. But the fact of the matter is that, as our distinguished chairman has pointed out, that major cuts were made prior to the bills arriving at this committee, and the possibility of, as I said, more than nine percent of additional cuts uh, will be before the house tomorrow if this rule passes. And also that it's probably in the last eight to ten years that the two appropriation bills have been uh, structured and one is foreign aid because and the legislative uh, branch appropriations because of the ability for some people to demagogue the issue and uh, to to play to the the back home uh, the community back home and I just think that we've got to be stand above that and uh, we've got to vote on each of these issues uh, on the merit of them as we see fit uh, and I think that the committee has been fair uh, in their, their parceling out of the amendments and uh, that uh, you, re you can see the Republicans have uh, some major amendments here as well as the Democrats and the rest are nonpartisan. So Mr. I, chairman, mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, might I just uh, 
respond to my good friend Tony Bielenson and to you. You know, uh, he made the point that uh, the amendments that are allowed, if they all were to pass, would result in cutting $170 million out of this budget. Now that sounds like a lot of money. It sounds like it's uh, very benevolent on our part to cut our budget $170 million. The point is that this bill already has an increase of 100 plus million in it. Now we're going to cut 170 million out of that total. The total is $2,000 million. In other words, that's how much we are spending on the legislative process here. So we're going to cut 170 million out of that 2,000 million, and that's going to leave us with a slight decrease over last year of about one-tenth of one percent. That's the point we're making. So, Tony, it isn't a question of grandstanding or demagoguing. Those are facts, and we don't think that that's right. If we were allowed these amendments that were, uh, were submitted by some 43 members, we would be able to cut some $380 million. That, to me, would be significant and would be fair, and if we were unable to pass them on the floor, then the chips fell, fell, fell to where they may, and, uh, and we failed. But uh, we aren't getting the opportunity. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dyer. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, first of all, I'd like to say that I support Mr. Quillen's call for an open rule, and I'd like to make just a, a couple of brief comments, if I might. Uh, Mr. Fazio earlier uh, in his testimony referred to the fact that the legislative branch appropriations bill is 1 16th of 1% of the federal budget. And we all know that as we look at the other programs that the federal government is involved in, it is a small amount. But having said that, there, there have been, and I don't want to say in recent years, but there has been a dramatic increase in the level of expenditures for the legislative branch since the 1960s. And that has been one of the issues which I think is very important and needs to be recognized on this whole question of the power of incumbency. Now, I had the privilege of serving on this committee charged with trying to reform this institution. And unfortunately, we haven't been able to get through this committee or to the floor a package which would bring about real reform as the American people would like to see it and as I believe a majority of the members of this House would like to see it. So it seems to me that as we look at this issue of reform, we're not trying to demagogue it. There was a good faith attempt made by members of the Appropriations Committee to support a rule which would allow for all of the ideas to be considered. And the call to which Mr. Solomon has just referred that came from the ranking Republican on the Legislative Appropriations Subcommittee demonstrated that that attempt to negotiate a bipartisan agreement, which you've heralded, has broken down. And it's for that reason that we have decided to oppose the rule. And it doesn't have anything to do with the bill itself. It has to do with the lack of an open amendment process and I hope very much that this committee will support Mr. Quillen's amendment. Uh, did, uh, did I understand the gentleman say that it had not this uh, agreement between Mr. Young and Fazio broken down that you would have supported the rule? No, what I'm saying is that a good faith attempt was made. And I don't know what that, uh, you know, the agreement broke down. I would have liked to have seen the final uh, package that, uh, that possibly could have gotten our support. Well, this I mean, is the, the first. Point, the, the, point, the point that I'm making is very simply that we tried to negotiate the leadership on both sides to come up with an agreement. And we've now been told by the ranking Republican on the committee, who has worked diligently with Mr. Fazio and was praised by Mr. Fazio and others today for having taken on this task of the Legislative Appropriations Bill, he's now said that we shouldn't support the rule. And so that's demonstration, clearly a demonstration. Would the gentleman yield? Happy to yield. Well, friend. I think to answer our chairman's uh, question, uh, from the outset, we had said that if we could have these amendments made in order uh, and eliminate perhaps the duplicative ones, there are some here that are almost identical, if we had eliminated those and uh, knocked out those seven or eight, leaving about uh, 25 or 30 amendments, we would certainly support the rule, and we had, we had said that from the beginning. That's what we've been negotiating, but uh, that's not the case. Mr. Chairman, may Mr. I, Gordon. could you clarify something for me, please? It's, uh, earlier in today, uh, when we were having the testimony, um, it seems to me that, that the min ranking minority member, Mr. Young, and the ranking majority member, Mr. Fazio, concurred that there, there were two opportunities for anyone who wanted to introduce these amendments. They could have brought it either to the subcommittee or to the committee level before this. So is it correct that anybody who, who wants an amendment today 
has already had two opportunities to do that? No, that's not correct. No, any any member correct. of the House? Any no. member of the House? They could have gone before the committee with their amendments. Is that not what Mr. Young? Any, is that what? That's what he said. Yes. Today? Okay, I just want to be sure. So. So that, so that I, I, I did not hear Mr. Young, I didn't hear Mr. Way, Young Mr. Chairman. Say that. I did not hear Mr. Young oh, yeah. agree to that, Mr. Chairman. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, well, I'm just asking, Mr. <laughs> Chairman, was, as I recall, well, Mr. Young and Mr. Fazio said that um, anyone who wanted to bring an amendment to them, uh, both at the subcommittee level and the full committee level, had that opportunity. Well, and I, I think they said a couple were yeah. brought, and they were, and they. Right. I can't. Because I sat through the whole testimony and heard everybody. I don't know if Mr. Young said it or Mr. Fazio, but it was said. It, yeah, I asked them both. The I, w I asked the question to both of them. Yeah. Would the gentleman yeah. yield on that point? Sir. Uh, you know, the legislative appropriations bill, like all appropriations bills, should, under the standard rules of the House, go directly to the floor, and every member should have the opportunity to offer an amendment there. Now, this announcement of stating that members should submit their amendments earlier, that clearly is not a uh, procedure under the standard rules of the House. Well, I mean, and I, that's why Mr. Quillen has moved for an yeah. open rule here, so that we can move ahead with a normal yeah. procedure and every member can have the opportunity to offer amendments there. Well, there are really two questions here. Um, it, it, there are two, one question is, did, have people had two opportunities already? The answer to that is yes. The other question is, should they have a third opportunity? And, 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 and again, and, and you can very well take the position that they should have that third opportunity. Um, and, I, and, and that's not unreasonable. But it does not uh, take away the fact that there were two opportunities. I think it's not unreasonable everyone. because it's the standard right. operating okay. procedure sure, sure, sure. for the House of Representatives. And that, and that is perfectly fine. And I fine. think that should be the first opportunity and not the third opportunity. Well, it just happens that these other two came before that. I mean, there's always a subcommittee meeting, then there's a full committee meeting, and then there's, and then there's the House. Mr. Mr. Chairman? Wait, wait, gentlemen, you know. Mr. Chairman? Uh, Mr. Frost? Um, it is 10-20, uh, and we know we have a long series of votes ahead of us. Uh, I think it would, uh, we've had ample discussion on this matter. Uh, could we begin the series of votes? Mr. Chairman, I would have been happy to have been here at 6 o'clock. I was. Um, you know, the, the question arose uh, about Mr. Young uh, not being happy with the situation. Uh, the last time that I've talked with Mr. Young and Mr. Fazio, that there was no indication by either one of them that this is broken down. And, and that's just the way our, our committee is going to proceed until I get some, something official that the... Uh, well, wait a minute, Mr. Chairman. No. I just received the phone call and related to you. Did you get a call from Young himself? Just now. Just 10 minutes ago, and I reported it. <laughs> Okay. Well, if that's so, it's regrettable. It, it's broken down. But these amendments were, were made as a result of uh, communications we had when the agreement evidently had not broken down. So I would uh, think that uh, we could now proceed with the vote on Mr. Quillen. Mr. Chairman, I insist on my open rule amendment. I insist on you getting a vote on it, Mr. Quillen. question comes on the... Mr. Quillen's amendment for an open rule. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Aye. No. The no's appear to have it. The no's have it. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Derrick. No. Mr. Beans. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bunn. No. Mr. Hall. No. Mr. Lee. No. Mr. Gordon. No. Ms. Slotter. No. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Quillen. Aye. Mr. Dryer. Aye. Mr. Gosk. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. <laughs> Four members have been voting the affirmative, nine the negative. The motion is not adopted. Mr. Uh, Chairman. Mr. Solomon. In light of the, uh, the, <laughs> the disappearance of comity and uh, the breakdown in the, uh, in the agreement, uh, you have before you a list of, uh, of amendments uh, that we feel are all significant amendments. And uh, they are, I would uh, at this time move that uh, we make in order all of these pre-filed amendments on the sheet you have before you. There are 33 listed uh, minus uh, the uh, 12 that were made in order. 
Uh, so you're talking about uh, uh, 20, about 20 amendments. Mm -hmm. And we would, uh, the amendments uh, contained in this uh, handout before you would not be subject to amendment, but debatable for 20 minutes each, divided between the proponent or a designee and an opponent. In block amendments would not be subject to a division in the House or Committee of the Whole, and appropriate waivers would be provided to those amendments which need them. That's 20 minutes times 20 amendments. We could uh, accomplish this uh, during the course of, uh, of, the, uh, of tomorrow and be out of here by 5 o'clock. Uh, if we were allowed all of these amendments, we would vote for this rule and uh, we would take it to the floor. It would not be a totally open rule, but at least any member who had the uh, uh, who was interested in filing amendments would then be heard, at least on our side of the aisle. You're welcome to do the same thing on your side of the aisle. And, would the uh, gentleman yell just I'd for be, be quick, glad to. quick moment? Yeah. Earlier you had mentioned that some of these amendments um, were duplicate. Were duplicate, yes. So did you want to take I'm out? I've taken those out. Okay. We've done that. We've done that. So there, there, there are... Um, there are 20 amendments. Well, let's see. I see 33 on this list, and I think 12 are going to be made in order. Mm -hmm. So that's 21. Mm -hmm. And are you well, saying that, that some of those... Uh, are duplicates. Are, are some of those duplicates, so they'd be yes. less than 21 then? That would no, be, no, no, be 21 because some of the uh, some are Democrats, which are not on here. Some of, some of those 12 are Democrat amendments, which aren't on here. Oh, okay. So you still have the 21. Oh, okay. So, so, so you've the, taken the duplicates out I'm of this. The oh, okay, okay, out, okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Is there any discussion on the motion, Mr. Solomon? I think we've had enough discussion. Question comes on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No, the no's appear to have it. The no's have it. Respectfully ask for a recorded vote. The clerk will call the roll. Yeah. No. 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 Mr. Bielinson. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bonney. Mr. Hall. No. Mr. Wheat. Mr. Gordon. No. Ms. Slaughter. No. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Pollock. Aye. Mr. Dreyer. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Four members haven't voted in the affirmative, eight in the negative. The motion of General New York is not carried. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dreyer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I uh, move that we make in order Mr. Castle's amendment, which would terminate the current allowable practice of transferring up to $25,000 from office expenses to the official mail account. And we heard testimony from a couple of members on this uh, earlier today, and uh, it seems to me to be a very appropriate thing. It's one of those transfers that we witnessed that just helps members increase the flow of uh, mail that they're able to uh, pass out into their districts. And it seems to me that uh, we should not allow that trans transfer. And I would urge my colleagues to support the amendment. A uh, question comes on the motion, the gentleman from California. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. 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 The no's appear to have it. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Derrick. No. <coughs> Mr. Bronson. No. Mr. Bonner. No. Mr. Hall. No. Mr. Weed. Mr. Gordon. No. Ms. Slaughter. No. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Quillen. Aye. Mr. Dryer. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Four members have been voting in affirmative, eight in the negative. The motion of the gentleman is not carried. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dryer. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I move that we make in order a bipartisan amendment that was offered by uh, Messrs. Hoke, Coppersmith, and Jacobs, which would reduce funding in the bill by an amount equal to that requested for the purchase of calendars from the U.S. Capitol Historical <laughs> Society for use by members. I think that's an issue that uh, should be debated on the floor, uh, and I would move the, that amendment. You've heard the gentleman from California's motion. Any discussion? If not, on the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Aye. No. The no's appear to have it. The no's have it. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Durham. Mr. Bielinson? No. Mr. Frost? No. Mr. Bonner? No. Mr. Hall? No. Mr. Weeks? Mr. Gordon? No. Ms. Slaughter? No. Mr. Solomon? Aye. Mr. Quillen? Aye. Mr. Dreyer? Aye. Mr. Goss? Aye. Mr. Chairman? No. Mr. Baird? No. no. Four members haven't voted the affirmative, eight in the negative. The motion of the gentleman from California is not adopted. Mr. Chairman? Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Thank you. Um, this next moment, amendment is a, a very important one. It's an issue that's been debated regularly here. It has to do specifically with the legislative service organizations. 
We've had testimony over the past uh, year or two from Congressman Pat Roberts, who has pointed to the tremendous abuse which has taken place there. And uh, those legislative service organizations create opportunities for members to do things that would be inconceivable to do with our own office accounts. And uh, I hope very much that we can make in order the Klug Amendment, which prohibits use of members' official allowance for any legislative service organization, with the exception of the Democratic Study Group and the Republican Study Committee. And I think that to look at the Legislative Appropriations Bill without any consideration of addressing the LSO question is uh, very unfortunate, and I hope we can make this amendment in order. Are you, uh, are you in favor of the LSO? Is that what, what you're saying? No, no. I'm, what I'm asking is that we make an order, Mr. Klug's amendment, which prohibits the use of members' official we allowance. Did, we did not make that in order. No. And, and I want to make an order. Oh, you want to make yes, an order. I'm, I'm moving that Mr. Klug's <laughs> amendment number seven be made in order, and the argument I'm making is that it's very unfortunate that I'm this sorry. bill does not allow for any consideration of the LSO issue at all. Okay. The gentleman ha yield? Happy to yield. Well, as the gentleman knows, as the co-chairman of the Congressional Task Force to reform the Congress, which met uh, almost daily for one solid year, that this was one of the major issues uh, that uh, we received testimony on from all of the uh, think tanks, whether they be liberal or conservative, they all said uh, to a person that uh, these legislative support organizations were a total waste of the taxpayer's money. And uh, if you... But, and I, th and I think that also, that, that uh, as I mentioned earlier, the potential for scandal within the LSOs is so great because they allow things that would never be considered proper in our own personal office accounts okay. here. For example? Uh, the gentleman yield. Happy to yield. The, I'm a little puzzled why we don't have an amendment on the LSOs in the package. We had all kinds of testimony. We had 43 members, all kinds of amendments up here. I sat here along with the chairman and the other members here, uh, Mr. Frost particularly, for many hours today. And I noticed that in the few amendments that were made in order in the Democrat package, we don't have uh, LSOs. That's conspicuously absent. It's one of the areas where there is perhaps the most uh, opportunity for mischief. Mr. Frost had a very good point, that members have the right to assemble uh, in gatherings of their choice. I couldn't agree more. I totally agree. Caucuses, LSOs, common interests, east, west, north, south, whatever it may be. But it's the cost to the taxpayer and the accountability, appropriate audits, those types of things that we're trying to get a con uh, handle on here. Uh, and we have nothing in this package. And I don't think the American public are going to let this one go by. This is a great omission. Thank Pat you Roberts, for yielding. Uh, I'm happy, happy to yield. My, Pat Roberts uh, has spent a great deal of time studying this issue, and he has come up with some extraordinary examples of abuse within LSOs where taxpayer funds have been used for the purchase of uh, tremendous amounts of liquor and food and other kinds of things, and very little accounting of that. And it seems to me that as we look at the whole LSO, it's a potential scandal which as Porter says, the American people are not about to tolerate, and to ignore that in this legislative appropriations bill, I believe, is a real travesty. I'm happy to yield to my friend from New York. I just, just want, to, want to say this again. I just have to point out that uh, there is no authorizing bill. There is no authorizing legislation where we can deal with issues like this. We haven't had one in five years, and we aren't apt to have one in another five years if we don't get the con congressional reform legislation on the floor, and there is practically no hope of that. Uh, therefore, this is the only vehicle that we have to try to deal with this uh, very controversial issue, and it deserves debate on the floor. And uh, that's why I believe that uh, you could make this exception, Mr. Chairman, and, uh, and allow this amendment to be debated on the floor for at least 20 minutes, if not an hour. Well, I'd like to inform the gentleman that uh, uh, that I have every indi every uh, indication of, of that the legislative reform bill will be hitting the floor. I don't know exactly in what phase, but Mr. Billinson is currently working on it, and as I said before, that Mr. Hamilton is talking to members individually and collectively on what he uh, thinks that is needed to make the legislative reform package work. Well, the problem that we worry about is that it, uh, it will come to the floor under restrictive rule and won't allow an amendment like this to be offered, and uh, uh, therefore we will have lost that opportunity as well. 
question comes on the gentleman's amendment. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 The no's appear to have it. Chairman, uh, may we have a record vote on that? The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Chairman. No. Mr. Bielens. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bond. No. Mr. Hall. No. Mr. Wheat. Mr. Gordon. No. Ms. Slaughter. Mr. So uh, Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Quillen. Aye. Mr. Dreyer. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Four members haven't voted in the affirmative. Eight in the negative. The motion is not adopted. Mr. Chairman, may I make a motion? Mr. Gordon, Tennessee. Mr. Chairman, um, uh, there has been steady progress made in reducing the uh, personnel in the legislative branch over the last several years. I think each year it has been reduced more than the year before. I think that trend needs to continue, and I'd like to move that the Roberts-Klug uh, amendment, which uh, allow or requires reduction of 300 additional full-time employees be made in order. Question uh, come. Is, well, may I ask a question about this? Is that an additional 300 on top of the 300 that are always already made in order here? Because we haven't, we uh, haven't voted to make anything in order yet, have we? Excuse me. Yes. Have we voted? Oh yes. The motion. The motion that's before us right now includes the amendment that my friend's offering. And I think we want. I want to make sure that 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 that, that is a part of it. I think uh, it's important. So it's, it is part of it. Go it's already a, it's not, not part it of the motion. Passed it's not yet. been voted on. Oh, but, it it had, but it's, it part of, it's part of the motion that was Would submitted, wasn't it? Has it been, it, Mr. Chairman, has it been voted on yet? No, it won't be voted on. Was it moved? Last, was it offered last yet? Last matter. Uh, was it offered already? It was offered uh, in the original motion. So it's been part of the original motion. Yeah. So this is just a duplicative of the motion that's already been made. So does my friend from California have have a problem with reducing the employment by 300? Oh, I'd like to double that number if you would be uh, willing to do that. Well, why don't we start with 300 and see if we can get that passed first? Well, that's what's been offered by Mr. Frost. Well, then let's vote on it. Well, we're, we're, we're planning to do that if okay, well, we that's get to the end here. Uh, so, in other words, you want to just jump. duplicate what Mr. Frost right. has done. No, it's not offered by me. It was offered by Excuse the, me, by Mr. Mr. Derrick. Oh, Mr. Carter, got all these reformers you're over trying there. to get the committee to focus on the fact that we are making uh, these uh, substantial <coughs> trying to be cute. I think I think that we should, um, uh, you know, that we get all of these uh, these amendments over here on the other side. But uh, you know, we have the TV cameras grinding in here, and what the uh, those who are watching uh, uh, don't understand that we are incorporating these amendments uh, that, that these, you know, cutting amendments. these cutting amendments yeah. and I think what the gentleman from Tennessee uh, if I understand correctly is trying to bring this to the attention of the committee and the attention of those who might be uh, watching there are several amendments that are going to be uh, I hope that I we mean, made you know, over. like uh, we, we need to talk about uh, the uh, Pomeroy Quinn amendment which uh, is made in order uh, by uh, the Democrats on this uh, uh, committee that cuts $4 million out of FY 1995 and reduces the uh, official mail. And, you know, Mr. Chairman? the Democrats on this uh, committee are also uh, uh, the, the Thurman Amendment, which reduces by $2.942 million the amount appropriated for salaries. Well, the gentleman and yields. expensive, no, not at this time, of house officers and employees, specifying cuts for clerks, office, doorkeeper, director of non-legislative and financial services, historian, office of law, uh, revision council, and legislative council. And I would also want to bring to the uh, attention of, of the committee and those who might be watching the fact that the, uh, Mr. Chairman, can I have order, please? Order, please. Uh, the, uh, and I also want to bring attention uh, to the committee, uh, the Strickland Amendment, which uh, uh, it estimates uh, six, uh, a million five hundred and eighty thousand uh, dollars that's cut out for six new elevators in the Longworth building. This is a democratic initiative. I also want to uh, 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 mention the Lancaster Clue uh, Amendment, which cuts uh, four point four four one million dollars from the GPO and the Congressional uh, Printing Account, which is a bipartisan amendment. And also the Johnson of Georgia. Uh, I think it's uh, which reduces Senator congressional printing by uh, uh, three million dollars, and it, it I, goes on down well, no, millions I'm, and millions, well, and gentlemen, millions just, of dollars. Uh, I, I think it's perfectly fair for the offer of the motion to 
to tell uh, people interested what is in the motion, uh, rather than just looking like uh, the the uh, Democratic proposal doesn't have any cuts, and I think that's what Mr. Darkus is exactly. endeavoring to may, do. May I be allowed to proceed? Absolutely. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, and uh, you, we have another a bipartisan amendment which reduces the funding for the Botanical Garden account by seven million dollars, and another bipartisan amendment which reduces the funding for the GPO by one million five hundred thousand dollars. Another bipartisan amendment which reduces the full-time equivalent positions by. Uh, uh, 300, which we were just discussing, and another bipartisan amendment which raises the mandatory retirement age of Capitol Police Office from age 55 to 57, and a, uh, a Democratic amendment by the gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Trafficant, which is the sense of Congress that to the extent, extent practicable, all equipment and products purchased with funds made available in this bill must be American-made. Uh, another amendment that reduces the funding for the Government Accounting Office by 5%, which amounts to $30,868,000. Uh, another amendment that freezes the overall FY 1995 level at the FY 1994 level by reducing the GAO funding by 11%, eliminating $7.8 million for the Botanical Garden construction, $103,000 for automobiles, and $21,931,000 for OTA and freezing funds. Uh, could I have order, Mr. Chairman? I, uh, and, uh, the chair is, is, is trying to keep order on both sides and appreciate mm -hmm. if everybody mm -hmm. would respect it uh, since we have a very... freezing funds for the absolutely. architect of the Capitol, uh, for GPO, for congressional printing and binding. These are all initiatives that have been put in here by the Democratic majority on this uh, on this committee, and uh, some of them are bipartisan, but I don't think it is fair for it to sit here and have all of these commitments and lead those who may be watching uh, to believe that the, the Democrats have not made substantial, substantial uh, cuts uh, in this funding bill. Mr. Thank Chairman. You, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dreyer. Uh, Mr. Frost said I, I, I yield back the time. Mr. I'm sorry. Mr. Gordon has the time. I yield back uh, my time. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dreyer. No, I'd just like to say that Mr. Frost said earlier that, and this was 20 minutes ago, that it was uh, getting to be very late, and he wanted to proceed with votes. But since we've now heard of the amendments that have been made in order, I think that it would be appropriate for us to share with our colleagues those amendments that were not included. And at this point, I'd like to read those for my colleagues, and then we will have a chance to debate and uh, proceed with that. This was not my choice, but I think that this is the only fair thing to do. We've just denied an opportunity to put in order the Castle Amendment, number two, which would have terminated the current allowable practice of transferring up to $25,000 from office expense accounts to official mail accounts. Now, one of the major concerns that's out there is the constant increase in the flow of mail that emanates from this place, and many people have abused that. We also have just gentlemen, turned down the, yield, the bipartisan with the Hope gentleman. Copper. I'd like to go through this, if I might. The okay. Hope Copper Smith Jacobs Amendment, which would reduce funding in the bill by an amount equal to that requested for the purchase of calendars for the U.S. Capitol Historical Society for use by members. And then, uh, the, uh, actually, the uh, amendment that Mr. Klug offered on legislative service organizations. We've gone through the debate on that. It is potentially one of the greatest scandals that exists in this House, and it's not even being addressed in this legislation. Then we've had submitted the Boehner Amendment, which alters official mail formula and bans the transfer of funds for members' official expenses, expense accounts to the official mail allowance, once again creating an opportunity for the increase in mail. Unfortunately, the proposal that's been submitted by Mr. Derrick doesn't make in order the amendment that Mr. Uh, Boehner has offered to reduce the statutory funds for committee employees by a very modest $2.2 million. Mr. Boehner also offered an amendment which was not made in order which reduces the official mail account by $3.2 million. Unfortunately, in the negotiating process, it wasn't seen fit to allow the amendment that Mr. Boehner proposed which applies the Freedom of Information Act requirements to certain congressional agencies. There was an amendment offered by our colleagues, uh, Messrs. Camp and Zimmer, which would permit members to return unspent funds from clerk hire official expenses and official mail cost accounts to the Treasury for deficit reduction. Something that the American people, I think, would support 
and I believe a majority of this House would support if they'd have a chance to vote on it. But unfortunately, with a proposal that's been submitted to us, members will not have a chance to vote on it. Then uh, a couple of our uh, very dynamic freshman members, uh, Ms. Fowler and Mr. Torkelson, have offered an amendment that's not included in this proposal, which requires that each member's monthly franking expenditures be made public. Most people here support the idea of full disclosure, and yet we don't even make, on a monthly basis, public the, uh, the franking expenditures. And uh, unfortunately, my very good friend whose amendment was praised by my colleague from Woodland Hills, Mr. Goss, does not have his amendment made in order, which would re reduce all discretionary amounts in the bill by 20%. Then uh, the MICA amendment, which abolishes the, com abolishes the Committee on Government Operations beginning with the 104th Congress and directs the House to transfer the committee's jurisdiction and functions to existing standing committees, finally dealing with this issue of 266 committees and subcommittees that we have in this House and Senate for the 535 of us. Unfortunately, the MICA amendment is not made in order under the proposal that's been submitted to us by Mr. Derrick, which requires that funds for salaries and expenses of the Committee on Government Operations be allocated to the majority and minority staff proportional to the party representation in this House. I think that's what the American people deserve, and unfortunately, they're not getting it. And remember, Mr. Chairman, I didn't start this process this evening. Unfortunately, the Ewing Amendment has not been made in order, which provides $1.14 million uh, for the LBJ Congressional Internship Program. And uh, the Ewing Amendment number 24, which cuts uh, $1.14 million from the funding for committee investigative staff. The Dunn Amendment, which reduces the funding for committee investigative staff by 4%, which would be $2.1 million. The Dunn Amendment, which was a very important issue that was addressed by our Joint Committee on the Organization of Congress, which requires that one-third of investigative funds be made available for each committee and expended at the discretion of the ranking minority member of the committee. So there's a little more balance in the investigative operations here rather than the one-sidedness that we've witnessed with four decades of one-party rule. Unfortunately, the Blute Amendment is not made in order, which reduces official mailings to 1.5 per address prohibits the transfer of up to $25,000 from other office accounts to the official mail account, prohibits unsolicited mail within 60 days of election, and directs that all unspent funds be returned to the Treasury. Then uh, we've unfortunately got the Michael Amendment, proposed by our leader, which requires a 4% cut in the number of full-time employee positions from the September 30, 1995 level and from the September 30, 1996 level in each of the following. The House and Senate, Architect, Capitol Police, Congressional Budget Op Office, uh, Copyright Tribunal, General Accounting Office, Government Printing Office, the Office of Technology Assessment, and the Library of Congress. A very balanced proposal made by our minority leader for a 4% cut. And unfortunately, the proposal that we've been submitted, that's been submitted to us by Mr. Derrick, does not allow our minority leader's amendment to be made in order. Then, Mr. Ramstead had two amendments that were designed to bring about across-the-board cuts, which, quite frankly, would have been made in order if we went under the standing rules of this House for consideration of this measure. One called for a cut of 2.7 percent, the other a cut of 5.7 percent. Then Mr. Schaefer offered an amendment which reduces all committee staff funding by 25 percent. Now, it seems to me that we should at least have an opportunity to consider that and yet the proposal that's been submitted to this committee by Mr. Derrick does not allow for consideration of that. Then Mr. Thomas of Wyoming called for the reduction of funding for the General Accounting Office by 15 percent from $439 million to $373 million. Unfortunately, we're not going to even have an opportunity to consider that on the floor if Mr. Derrick's proposal is successful. Then Mr. Goss has a proposal which reduces the uh, nursing position salaries under the architect of the Capitol by $240,000. Mr. Goss also have an, has an amendment which reduces by 50 percent the amount appropriated to the office of attending physician, reduces the number of Navy personnel assigned to the office from 14 to 8, and reduces by 50 percent the allowable reimbursement to the Navy for personnel and supplies. Mr. Thomas of California, who's worked long and hard on this issue as a member of the Administration Committee, sets the maximum statutory mailing allowance at the first class postage rate multiplied by twice the number of eligible district addresses 
rather than the current law, three times the number of eligible addresses. And now it seems to me in looking at just a few of the examples that have been submitted to us here that are not made in order, uh, I didn't want to go through reading all these, but if you all are touting the fact that you have offered all of these major cuts, it seems to me that members of this committee should know there were a wide, wide range of proposals that were offered and were not allowed under the proposal that Mr. Derrick has made. And I anxiously look forward to at least considering in this committee those amendments. And I hope well, that the we gentleman can proceed. Yield. I'm happy to yield Mr. to my Mr. Friend. Chairman, could, would you, could I have a parliamentary question? Could you answer a parliamentary question for me? Gentleman, state is parliamentary, parliamentary uh, inquiry. Did the members have an opportunity to offer all of these amendments at the subcommittee level? As, as you, the gentleman stated, it came from either the chairman or the ranking member. I remember that they did. So all these amendments could have been offered at the subcommittee level or any others. Right. And then what about at the full committee level? Could have all these amendments been offered at the full committee level? The gentleman's or, correct. Or any others? So there's already been two opportunities mm -hmm. for all of these amendments to, to have been brought forward. Mm -hmm. And they could have been. Okay, I just wanted, That's to, a new just issue. wanted to get that in the Mr. Chairman, would, uh, would you yield? Issue? I'd like to be recognized. All right. The pending question is the Gordon Amendment, and the chair has been very liberal on both sides. On uh, going, I yield back the balance of my time. Going over the five-minute rule. <laughs> You'll have to yield back your whole minority's <laughs> entire time to get even. So I think we, because of the hour and because of the uh, uh, the amendments, and uh, I think we should adhere now to the five-minute rule. But the, I just want to uh, Mr. Chairman, remind thank you. the gentleman and lady that the uh, uh, the amendment is the Gordon Amendment. Is it? Just a moment. Uh, pardon, may I make an inquiry? Surely. <coughs> it seems to me that uh, if you're talking about Mr. Gordon offering the uh, what was it? It's been so long ago, I can't remember now. The land the, the, uh, the uh, Pomeroy Quinn. The Pomeroy, Pomeroy, Robert's, Pomeroy. Clue. Robert's Clue. Number <laughs> Robert's six. Clue. Robert's Clue. Number Robert's six. Clue. It seems to me that that motion would be out of order since it's already a part of the pending motion by Mr. Derrick. Uh, uh, I'm just being. Yeah, we've already heard it from Mr. Derrick. Uh, it's not out of order. Well, who says it's not out of order? I did. Well, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> who are you? Mr. Chairman. All right. I'd like to make a suggestion. I think we're being a little cute here. Mr. Frost. I think the, uh, the point has been uh, adequately made on both sides. I would respectfully suggest to my friend, Mr. Gordon, that he withdraw his amendment since it is uh, somewhat duplicative of something that we will consider at a later time so that we can proceed to move ahead with the other votes before us. I insist on the Gordon Amendment. I think well, he has I insist right. on I the Gordon Amendment. I, on on the the I mean, let's do the Pomeroy and the Thurman and the Lancaster. We'll have votes on all those, too. Fine. That's in order. You know very well it's not in order. It's out of order. <laughs> Any first, further discussion on the Gordon Amendment? Mr. Chairman, was the Gordon Amendment... Uh, Actually, it's the, be the Roberts Clue oh, Amendment, I guess. Well, I mean, the Gordon's motion. Yeah, I do have a, I have a question on it. Did this amendment go through the subcommittee and committee process that the gentleman has been asking about? And for the next four weeks, you're going to... They had the opportunity to. Whether they did, I really don't know. Well, what we're saying then... What, what we're saying then is... Is this, uh, some did have the opportunity uh, and got treated one way, and some did have the opportunity and got treated another way. So it doesn't seem to matter what difference is. As I recall, this appropriation subcommittee does not have a member's day. It is not customary for members to add their amendments there. Mr. Natcher told us many times, a revered man, that the place for these types of amendments was on the floor of the House, which is what Mr. Young said today. Mr. Young said that uh, anyone who wanted to bring these to him had the opportunity to do it. Everybody has that opportunity. I have the opportunity to be President of the United States. The point is what's practical, and the way business is done around here is that it is done by amendments at this time for these types of appropriation bills. That's what the members expect. That's how they operate. And that's why we had 43 members offering uh, amendments. It's real simple. Mr. Ch Mr. Chairman? Mr. Billingson. May I make an effort to persuade our friend from Tennessee to withdraw his amendment since it's not necessary, since it's I, I will. I will suspend or withdraw the amendment at the present time. All right. The, without objection, the amendment is withdrawn. And Mr. I would think that me. now we can I, get out. I, I reserve the right to bring it back up at, an, at a later date. Okay. Later date. Later time. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, may I be recognized to make a motion? Would you, uh, would the gentleman withhold for one minute? I will withhold. 
I'd like to also reserve the right uh, for all of these amendments that were made in order, starting with the Pomeroy Quinn that has been listed wrong, the agreement between the, rank, the uh, chairman of the uh, subcommittee, Mr. Fazio, and the ranking Republican, Mr. Young, was that that would be a Quinn Amendment. Now it's turned around and it is a Pomeroy Amendment. I'd like to reserve the right to offer that and all of these others at an appropriate time. Would the gentleman yield? I'd be more than happy to yield. Well, I thought there was no longer any agreement. That's just what you told no. us a few minutes ago. We, what, 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 this is the broken down agreement. part of the original discussion that was uh, held between can all be cute around Mr. Here. Young oh, and Mr. Right. Fazio. I think that uh, the hour is getting late. The I tempers are getting fled and I, I, I just think that uh, people should relax and try to expedite the business. Uh, we have other things to address. Uh, we've got a, a big day tomorrow and some of these people have to go to other meetings and uh, so I would hope that uh, people would keep that in mind. Mr. Chairman, Mr. I, I would like to be recognized to make a motion. Thank you, sir. Recognized. Thank you. I would like to uh, move that we make an order Boehner Amendment number eight. This is the one that my colleague from California referred to earlier. This actually alters the official mail formula and bans the transfer of funds from members' official expenses account to the official mail allowance. The, the practical results of this is we stop this habit of loading up on the franc for those who come to election time and decide they want to send out more, quote, franc mail uh, in order to better inform their constituents. Uh, and I think that's an abuse we all understand and abhor and would like to correct. This is a good way to do it. In addition to that, it cuts back the franking allowance, which for most members, I understand, is nowhere near used. Uh, and it does it uh, by changing the formula. And I think it's entirely reasonable. I realize there are other amendments that are going to be made in order on this subject, but this has its own unique characteristics, and I therefore move it in order. Question comes from the motion. Any discussion? If not, on the motion. All those in favor of the motion by the gentleman from Florida will say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. 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 The no's appear to have it. Respect last recorded vote, please, Call Mr. the roll. No. Mr. Young. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bond. No. Mr. Hall. Mr. Weaver. Mr. Gordon. No. Mr. Slaughter. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Quillen. Aye. Mr. Dry. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Four members haven't voted in the affirmative, seven negative. The motion is not adopted. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Goss. May, may I recognize, please, to make in order a motion, amendment number nine, by Honorable Mr. Boehner. The question comes in. Uh, no, I'll explain it if you'll recognize it. I just asked to be uh, recognized. Um, it reduces the statutory, the statutory funds for committee employees by $2.2 million. Again, this is another way at getting at the question of cost of the legislative branch. It is an area that has been talked about not only in terms of the amount of dollars that go into legislative branch, but also the question of the division of the dollars. This goes to the amount. It is very straightforward. We are trying to reduce the cost of government. You've heard the motion, General from Florida. On the motion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Aye. No. The no's appear to have it. I respectfully ask Clerk for a call. Call the roll. Mr. Derrick. No. Mr. Bielson. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Blinder. No. Mr. Hall. No. Mr. Weed. Mr. Gordon. No. Mr. Slaughter. Mr. Solomon. Yes. Mr. Quillen. Aye. Uh, Mr. Dreyer. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Four members haven't voted in the affirmative, eight in the negative. The motion, General Flaud, is not adopted. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Goss. Mr. Chairman, I would like now to make that we make a uh, move that we make an order. The Boehner Amendment number 10, which reduces the official mail account by 3.2 million. I know that there are going to be those that say that we have already reduced the official mail account by a few million dollars in the committee uh, work. And I'm well aware of that. And this adds a few more million dollars. And it is still not enough to get it down to what is a sensible amount of money. And that is, that is why, that is particularly why I think we ought to go ahead and support this amendment. Uh, then if we can find another amendment to cut it further, we should do that. If there is a member in this House who is legitimately not able to deal with his legitimate correspondence with the franking allowance that he or she has now, I am not aware of it. 
I am aware of abuse, and everybody in this room is aware of abuse. This gets at that question of abuse and gets at the question of affordability and saving the taxpayers' money. It is a good amendment. It should be debated. The uh, gentleman is aware that the... Uh, yes, I am aware that there are uh, other amendments made in order that deal with this. That do cut more money. Yeah. Yes. That we I, made an order. Yes, and I'm pleased that you have. What I also feel is that the debate that goes on on this, as you'll notice, we have several other uh, that are made in order where we talk about uh, different cuts. Uh, we have others that were not made in order where we talk about different cuts, such as Mr. Ramstead. If you start with my amendment, which is perhaps the most serious, it cuts the ledge uh, appropriations 20 percent. If you take a look at some of the others that the members have supported, there are other levels, all the way down to Mr. Ramstead's, I think, final version, which was a 2 percent or something like that. I think Mr. Michael and some others were in the middle. The point is there's a range of options here. They should all be debated. And that is why in the spirit that I offer this in. It takes nothing away from what you've done uh, to make the other in order. Question comes on the motion of the gentleman from Florida. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. The no's appear to have it. Respectfully ask for a quarter, Mr. Clerk, call the roll. No. Mr. Beelens. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bonner. No. Mr. Hall. No. Mr. Wheat. Mr. Gordon. No. Ms. Slaughter. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Quillen. Aye. Mr. Dreyer. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Chen. No. Four members having voted in the affirmative, six in the negative. Mr. Gordon. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make an order. Well, I finish my oh, excuse me. <laughs> The uh, motion is not adopted. Mr. Gordon. Mr. Chairman, I would like to make in order the Lancaster-Klug Amendment, which cuts $4.441 million from the GPO, the Congressional Printing Account. Mr. Chairman, is that part of the proposal that was submitted to us by uh, Mr. Derrick in the uh, original motion that was made? Is this simply a duplication of that proposal? Has Mr. Derrick withdrawn that amendment from what he's proposed? I'll answer for him. Uh, the gentleman's being cued again, offering an amendment that's already in the rule. Yes. Oh, 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 oh. So, so Mr. Derrick has withdrawn that, and it's now being well, resubmitted. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the uh, uh, I had inadvertently uh, gave the wrong. Yeah, it was four to seven rather than four to six. The last vote doesn't change anything. That's, that's okay. No, I just wanted. To, I don't well, want to be misquoted. That helps. Anyway, us. gentlemen, Mr. Uh, Chairman, continue. Uh, I was just asking, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you for clarifying that vote, by the way. I was just asking uh, whether or not uh, Mr. Derrick has withdrawn this amendment from his proposal, and that's, that might be the reason that Mr. Gordon has chosen to offer it. I recall that it was part of the original package that was submitted to us in the rule uh, as it's been passed out by staff here. And I just wonder if there's a need to duplicate what's already before us. Maybe Mr. Derrick can answer that question. If, if, if the motion is in order, then I think that it's... The motion is in order. Well, then, then, so then there is a need if, there's a mo if the motion is in order. So the, so the motion is not already before us by Mr. Derrick? The gentleman has a right to make his motion. If right. the gentleman has some objection, will we vote on my final motion? He should rise at that right. Yeah, I, I was just asking if the proposal that Mr. Gordon has made is already before us. It is part of the proposal that I made. So it's already before So we're duplicating something that's already been proposed. Well, we're, we're pointing out the fact that uh, there's a substantial cut that has been made by the Democratic majority on this. Uh, this, is, this is a bipartisan amendment. This is a bipartisan amendment that cuts $4.441 million from the GPO, the <laughs> Congressional Printing Office. And if it's in order, uh, I, I would like to have a vote. The uh, uh, gentleman yield. Mr. Quillen, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Yeah. I don't have this. Yeah, the he gentleman yields. I don't have the time, but if, I, if, if I'm given some time, I'll certainly yield to you. It seems to me that we should know the amendments which the committee has recommended to be made in order. If this is an order of the committee that we're going to vote on later on, why do we need to make that motion, I asked the gentleman? Because it's just, spe it's just speculative. It's speculative. We don't know whether it's going to pass later on. It's going to be a part of a larger motion. We simply don't know whether it's going to pass. And so uh, I just simply, you know, if this motion well, is in order. Well, if you leave the room, it enhances our chance of uh, 
<laughs> if, if this motion is in order, I think no, with, uh, I don't want to well, delay well, well, things any longer. Mr. Chairman, waiting for what I, I know, but we still have the Do you have the chairman? I just don't want to well, delay things. Uh, if this is in order, I'd like to put a motion uh, uh, for a cut before this committee. Well, I'd say it's a delay to be duplicating well, something Mr. that's chairman, already before us. So we're talking about the dilatory process here. Mr. Solomon is recognized. Sorry. Well, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to uh, make a, uh, an amendment to the gentleman's motion, but before I do that, I just have to point out, you know, you are, uh, in my opinion, and have been a very fair chairman. But, uh, Mr. Chairman, you are not being consistent on your ruling uh, on Mr. Gordon's uh, motion saying that it is in order. Uh, you are very quick, and you and other members, my good friend Mr. Bonnier, I recall one time, I know Mr. Billinson and Mr. Frost, uh, have ruled us out of order when we have uh, mistakenly offered, as we do sometime, when we have a whole list of amendments, and we offer one that's already made in order under the rule, and you have ruled it out of order time and again. You have called our attention to it. And, uh, you know, we just have to be consistent I, I, around here. I, I think I called your attention to it, but I never ruled it out of order. <laughs> well, just like you're calling Mr. Gordon's attention to it. If, if, if the gentleman attention to it, Mr. Chairman, we haven't then offered it. Right. Mr. Gordon seems to be insisting on his amendment, uh, well, which has already been proposed we, by Mr. The, Derrick. We withdrew it because we didn't want to be cute about it, and uh, we wanted to get on with the business of the House. I would like to make an amendment to Mr. Uh, to Mr. Uh, Gordon's motion, however. Uh, he is right. This is a very good amendment, uh, and uh, I support it, and I'm going to fight for it on the floor. But uh, unfortunately, it doesn't go far enough. It's, it cuts... $4.4 million. Now, that's uh, not a lot of money from uh, the GPO, Congressional Printing Office, uh, account. We should at least cut that by another million dollars. And I would move to amend your motion and make that $5.441 million. Any other discussion? I'd support the amendment. It sounds like a very thoughtful proposal. I know Mr. Solomon spent a great deal of time analyzing the uh, effect of this and all, and I think it's worthy of our it's, committee's support. It's wonderful he could spend so much time since he just an amendment, amendment that was just made about two minutes ago. Uh, question comes on the amendment... Mr. Solomon's motion. To, you know, amendment, amendment made by Mr. Solomon to Mr. Gordon. Question comes on that motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Uh, no. Oh, oh, I think we the, won. The no's appear to have it. Oh, we have a record vote on that, Mr. Chairman? Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Derrick. No. Mr. Dean. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bond. No. Mr. Hall. Mr. Wheat. No. Mr. Gordon. No. Ms. Slaughter. No. Mr. Solomon. Hi. Mr. Quill. Hi. Mr. Dodd. Hi. Mr. Goss. Hi. Mr. Chairman. No. Let me go next. Yeah. Four members haven't voted in the affirmative, nine in the negative. The amendment of Mr. Oh, I mean after him. Mr. Uh, Solomon is not adopted. The question now comes from the motion of Mr. Gordon. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. The uh, ayes have it. It sure was easy once we finally got to the uh, vote, Mr. Chairman. Well, I'm glad we were able to get that done. All right. Mr. We get Chairman? To vote on it again too, I think. Probably. I, I would like to ask for a vote on it. Recorded vote. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Derrick. Aye. Mr. Bielens. Aye. Mr. Frost. Pass. Mr. Bunn. Aye. Mr. Hall. Yes. Mr. Wheat. Mr. Gordon. Aye. Ms. Slaughter. Aye. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Pullen. Aye. Mr. Dryer. Aye. Mr. Doss. Mr. Chairman. Aye. Look, 11 ayes and two presents. The motion of Mr. Gordon is adopted. Mr. Chairman, I have a motion. General status motion. Chairman, in the uh, motion uh, that uh, Mr. Derrick made much earlier on the rule, mm -hmm. uh, he had made an order, a, an amendment by Mr. Pomeroy and Quinn, which reduces official mail costs by four million for the fiscal year 1995. That is an excellent amendment, but we have the names wrong. Uh, under the agreement agreed to by Mr. Fazio and Mr. Young, who, are, who is the chairman and the ranking member, uh, it should have been the Quinn Pomeroy amendment. Uh, out of fairness, we don't want to go stealing amendments around here, and that's really what's being done here. So I would move that we make an order the Quinn Pomeroy amendment, which reduces official mail costs by four million for fiscal year 1995. Oh, the gentleman sad. just out of his own mouth said that agreement has broken down. That's right. I and want so to we're trying him. to put it back Goodbye. together right here. 
Well, I, I don't see how you can do it with one amendment. We're going to try. Well, Mr. We're going to try with more than one amendment. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Yes, I recognize you. Mr. Derrick, I'm sorry. Six months prematurely, but I recognize you. Thank you. You get that? No, that one went right by me. Um, uh, the, uh, Simon, I don't know about you, but he won't be here in six months. <laughs> Uh, the, uh, right too, you know, know what I'd like to We're say is, uh, thank you, uh, I can tell. Uh, uh, <laughs> the Pomeroy Amendment and the Quinn Amendment were identical. So there isn't anyone trying to do anything to anyone. And Mr. Solomon, you advised us just about a half an hour or 45 minutes ago that there was no longer any agreement. That's right. Okay, well, I mean, just so we understand that. Would the gentleman yield? I would be delighted to yield to the distinguished gentleman, the, the co-partner in trying to reorganize the House. <laughs> and I should say, uh, having gotten that nice introduction, that the testimony that my friend from South Carolina what is provided... Your hometown in, the joint in California? I want to, don't want to fail to Los mention. Angeles. Los Angeles. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let me, just say, let, let me just say that my You're friend provided point. excellent testimony before the Joint Committee on the Organization of Congress, and I hope very much that we can make some of the recommendations that my friend offered our Joint Committee in order if we could move uh, a real bill to reform this institution to the House floor. And uh, having said you that, I forgot the other point I was going to make. And I want to once again tell you what a great job you have done and what a wonderful member of Congress you are, and I love your state of California. Thank you very much. You're not going to retire there, are you? Oh my gosh. What's the uh, question uh, reversing the names? Oh, question now comes from reversing the names. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to reverse at this time, Mr. Not, Solomon? Not at this time. Uh, we reserve the right. All right. Question comes from reserving the names. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No, the no's Chairman, appear to have it. I really respectfully ask for, on behalf of Mr. Quinn, who originated the, uh, the amendment, uh, that we have a vote on that. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Derrick. This may be the most ridiculous vote of my career. Don't be too sure. No, no, no. Oh, no. More coming. Mr. Beals. No. With Mr. Mr. Gordon over there. No. Mr. Bonner. No. Mr. Hall. No. Mr. Weef. No. Mr. Gordon. No. Ms. Slaughter. No. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Quillen. Aye. Mr. Dryer. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Four members have voted affirmative, nine in the negative. The motion is not adopted. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Goss. Thank you, sir. I would like to move that we make in order the Boehner Amendment number 11. This particular one applies the Freedom of Information Act requirements to certain congressional agencies which are presently exempt. Mr. Boehner gave very good testimony about this today. Uh, he did point out some specifics. I think it's appropriate. And this comes under the why does Congress exempt itself from its own laws label. Uh, it seems to me the American people are asking us to comply with the same laws that we're asking them to comply with. And I therefore make this motion. Mr. Chairman, if I, Mr. If I may, just for a moment, forgive me. It is late. But uh, in all seriousness, just to advise the gentleman, I, I know he'll ask for a vote on this. This is one of the major areas which our, our committee is looking at. Subcommittee and the full committee, Mr. Dreyer and Mr. Hamilton have recommended uh, some decisions on it. The FOI, the Freedom of Information Act, is the most difficult part of the overall potential package of bills which ought to be perhaps applicable to Congress. Uh, but we are looking at it. We will have a recommendation in the near future. I think that's a preferable way of, of it coming out of you know, out of committee here instead of being part of the legislative appropriations bill. But I just want, I just want to advise that the gentleman that, that is under consideration, we are taking a look at it, and I hope there'll be something eventually to the gentleman's satisfaction later this year. I please the gentleman, yield to the gentleman. Uh, let, let me just say that, uh, that you're right, Tony, that, that it has been considered. But unfortunately, the schedule which was originally outlined for the work of the Joint Committee and the Organization of Congress has passed long ago. We were, at the outset, supposed to have the package to which you referred on the floor last October before we adjourned. That was the original schedule that we've had. And it's continued to move, and it's continued to move, and it's continued to move. And there are rumors out there that we won't, in fact, have a package on the floor that will address these issues. And since we've seen the date constantly pushed forward, it seems that this uh, might be the only opportunity for it actually to be considered. I serve as the ranking member of your subcommittee, and I would hope, and I've worked closely with you on this, that we could make it happen. But it's, I think, out of uh, frustration, since we haven't been able to address it up to this point, that 
Mr. Goss is offering the amendment. Will the gentleman yield? Uh, well, I just know, uh, first of all, I know Mr. Bielenson is, is very sincere in his intentions, and I know he, he will try to do that. But we have to once again point out there are, I think, 62 legislative days left before we adjourn this entire Congress and it goes out of, uh, out of business. And there is such a fight today to get legislation onto the calendar that, uh, Tony, I'm just afraid that you're going to be get left behind the, uh, uh, the fence someplace there because uh, we're not going to deal with half of the legislation that members are pushing to get on the floor. I understand. That's why this ought to be considered today. If I may, Mr. I understand, understand your concerns. I just, I, ask, I just, of course. May I ask a question? Surely, sir. Uh, is, is this part of the Hamilton uh, report that he insists well, to, on this, being... Uh, tied together, come out. Uh, well, the subject matter is, Mr. Chairman, and the, uh, there's great controversy. There's, there's almost total agreement now, I think, amongst all members from both parties that, that the vast majority of laws that apply to the rest of the folks in the country, rest of the citizens, should apply to us. There are particularly difficult problems with application of the, of the um, FOIA, Freedom of Information Act, which we are dealing with and which I hope we will have. A, a, you know, to present to the to the members later. I understand our Republican friends' concern that may not come up. I hope very much and hope and believe that they're wrong. Um, I'm doing my best, as you are, Mr. Chairman, to get this to the to the membership to the floor as soon as possible. I don't know when that'll happen, but I just and I don't mean to suggest that you shouldn't have a vote on this. I just do want to assure our friends that we've been looking at it carefully, and I hope that we will present it to the floor in a thoughtful and reasonable way in the in a reason in the reasonable future. Mr. Chairman, uh, I I uh, I hope that we're wrong too. The only reason that I made the statement that I did is that we have constantly seen this issue pushed off and pushed off. And unfortunately, what was reported out of our Joint Committee and the Organization of Congress in late November, just before Thanksgiving, and our adjournment from the first session of the 103rd Congress, we simply called, when the issue of congressional compliance came before us, for the establishment of a commission which would make recommendations back to the Congress as to what regulations that are promulgated by this institution that we might consider complying with. Now, I happen to think that that's a very weak proposal for congressional compliance, and my fear is that that is what will be submitted before us if we get anything, and that's why this proposal, which Mr. Goss has made, I think should be uh, considered by uh, the full membership. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to continue to ask for the vote and make the motion. I do very much appreciate Mr. Bielenson's remarks and assurances. I take him at his word. He is a true gentleman. Question comes in the motion, gentleman from Florida. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. The no's appear to have it. The no I respectfully ask for a recorded Clerk vote. Clerk will please, call the roll. Mr. Derrick. No. Mr. Bielenson. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bonnier. No. Mr. Hall. No. Mr. Weed. No. Mr. Gordon. No. Ms. Slaughter. No. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Quillen. Aye. Mr. Dreyer. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Four members having voted in the affirmative, nine in the negative. The motion, gentlemen, is not adopted. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dreyer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we had testimony from our uh, colleagues, uh, Mr. Camp and Mr. Zimmer, on uh, their amendment number 12, which permits members to return unspent funds from the clerk hire official expense and official mail accounts to the Treasury specifically targeted for deficit reduction. I mentioned this earlier when I was going through the, uh, the litany of amendments that haven't been included in the proposal that Mr. Derrick has made for this committee. It seems to me that the American people would like us to have the option of returning money from our official expense accounts to be utilized for deficit reduction since that is a, a major concern that uh, we continue to hear about in meetings that we have with constituents and in public opinion polls. And uh, I think that this is a very, uh, very uh, common sense amendment that should be made in order. You've heard the motion of the gentleman from uh, Florida. Uh, California. <laughs> uh, They're all alike. Uh, question comes in the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. The no's appear to have it. The no's have it. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Derrick. Aye. Mr. Bielenson. No. Mr. Gordon. Aye. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Dreyer. Aye. Mr. Quillen. Mr. Dryer. Aye. Mr. Goss? Aye. Mr. Chairman? No. Five members having voted in the affirmative, eight in the negative, the motion of the gentleman is not adopted. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Goss. 
Mr. Chairman, thank you. I'd like to move that we make in order the fowler Torkelson Amendment Number 13. This one requires that each member's monthly franking expenditure be made available to the public. Certainly any member can voluntarily do that now. The problem is in the abuse area at election time. There's a three-month lag so that people really can rig the system and not be caught up uh, in, in what they've done until well after the election. We know it happens. It's regrettable. This is a way to stop it. I don't see any reason why we shouldn't do this. Yeah. I think it will build confidence in the House. I'm sort of curious why this one wasn't made in order. Well, uh, one of the reasons was that you can't mail out 60 days before uh, an election, so therefore, uh, if th th this is one of the reasons that they felt that it, it wasn't necessary because you couldn't use your franking privilege anyway. That, Mr. Chairman, I agree, may work in some states, but not in other. You recall we do not have uniform requirements uh, in all states, and some elections are very early. And if you're concerned about the two months versus three months, you can do it and get away with it, because this, the, the requirement for filing is quarterly. I understand that. Which is 90, it was 90 days when we started anyway. Yeah. I think it still is 90 days. So what you've got is a 30-day window in there to, to fool around depending on how your state's primaries program works. Now, I'm just quoting the testimony. I'm not an expert yeah. on the subject. I'm just, it seemed to me to be a good idea because if there's one place where we really do have to own up on the frank, it's, it's in the election abuse. Uh, and this, I thought, was a good idea. I don't know whether it holds as much water as the testimony suggested, um, but it, 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 it seemed convincing to me. I didn't do the research on it. I don't know. No, I understand. I at least feel I ought to be given a chance to debate it, and if it doesn't hold water, it doesn't hold water. Question comes from the motion. General from Flower. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Aye. No. The no's appear to have it. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Derek. Mr. Beals. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bonney. No. Mr. Hall. No. Mr. Wheat. Mr. Gordon. No. Ms. Slaughter. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Quillen. Aye. Mr. Dreyer. Aye. Mr. Doss. Mr. Chairman. No. Four members haven't voted in affirmative, six and negative. The motion is not adopted. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Gordon. I'd like to move the trafficant motion, the sense of Congress, that to the extent practical, all equipment and products purchased with the funds made available in this bill must be American made. Additionally, all entities receiving funds in this bill should be uh, sent a notice of this sense of the Congress. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dreyer. Uh, I'd just like to ask a, a question. Is this amendment made an order under the proposal that's been submitted to the committee by uh, Mr. Derrick, or uh, is this uh, a duplication of the proposal that's already been presented to the committee for consideration? This is a similar motion that's made in so the So is it identical, or I mean, is there any difference? I didn't see any different in the difference in the wording. It is identical. But Mr. Chairman, has it passed? No, it hasn't passed. Well, it that's why passed. I think so it's all, already before us, though. But it it's has already been, before the committee. It has not been a but vote it has not taken. Passed. No, I know a vote hasn't been taken, but it, it, it's on the floor. And we're simply offering amendments yeah. to the proposal that's already been here. And so this, is a, this amendment, which Mr. Gordon is offering, is an amendment that's already included and in the package that is before the committee at the moment. Yeah, I think that I Mr. See. Gordon's intention is to show the vast yeah. people assembled in this room exactly Mr. Vandermeer's very what interested the, in this, I know. Uh, what the Congress has, uh, uh, what the committee has already cut uh, and what they intend to cut. Mr. Chairman, uh, if it hasn't passed, then I think it's an order. I'd simply want to try to get no, this passed. The parliamentarian was asked on this exact thing, and he said that it was an order. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, if this passes, do we have to print it twice? No, once is enough. Mr. Chairman, so, but we'll be voting on it twice have, if this passes. I have an amendment to the gentleman's motion. The gentleman will state his amendment. Uh, you know, uh, Mr. Trafficant is noted for uh, pursuing this kind of legislation, and I've uh, helped him pursue it in the past. But this one is not strong enough, in my opinion. Uh, it is a sense of Congress, and that's bad enough. It ought to be, uh, it ought to be law. But uh, it reads, uh, sense of Congress, that to the extent practicable, and that's what bothers me, uh, to the so extent practical, that. all equipment and products purchased with funds made available in this bill must be American-made. I'd like to remove the to the extent practical, practicable, so it reads, sense of Congress that all equipment and products purchased with funds made available in this bill must be American-made unless not available in this country. Well, I think so it's an interesting, that's an interesting proposal. Hook. Extent practicable. Uh, means they can, uh, they play games, you know. They say, well, it wasn't practical to go and find this other piece that was over here. 
So I want it to be in this country. So I would. Uh, uh, will the gentleman I'll, yield? I'd be glad to. Uh, I'm going to have to argue against my friend's amendment, <laughs> and the reason I do that is that I, I think that this is clearly a protectionist measure, which is being proposed by Mr. Solomon, and I think that Mr. Trafficant was very reasonable in his proposal, stating that to the extent practicable that this application be made. Now I have no problem with uh, the idea of having this debated on the House floor. But uh, I, I really think that Mr. Mr. Gordon's proposal uh, is much more balanced than the one that Mr. Selma has offered, and I'm going to be voting against that amendment. Well, re reclaiming yes. my, uh, <laughs> reclaiming have, my time. I have the time. I, have, huh? I, I was just given the time. Just well, I, what I happened don't. to my time? Well, Mr. I, Mr. I, Mr. Solomon is offering an amendment yeah. here. Well, wait a minute. And I just was speaking against up, the amendment uh, of Mr. Solomon. He's brought up NAFTA, and I happen to have all my NAFTA well, I, speeches. No, I, I just, uh, I just you know, said that. It has nothing to do with NAFTA. It has to do with the issue of protection. I thought we were going to get into NAFTA. But would, the uh, would the gentleman yield for just a I'd moment? be glad to yield my I friend. just want to say that I think that uh, Mr. Dreyer is on the wrong track and that I agree with Mr. Solomon. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Well, you're welcome to support it. Mr. Oh. Bailenson. Oh, my I, Lord. I, I did think it had something to do with NAFTA, and the gentleman reminds me that he and I were, were probably the, the two strongest free trade people on this committee, and I, I want to stand with the gentleman again this time as I did earlier. Is it this year, last year? I, I, NAFTA. I thank my friend, and I look forward to voting against well, Mr. Solomon's amendment. This, uh, this definitely here. is a NAFTA vote. So any of you that voted for NAFTA, NAFTA is a very small amendment. part of it. Those I think of you it goes further to MFN NAFTA with China, the Uruguay round of the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade. A wide range of trade issues are potentially affected by this amendment. I, I never oh. saw. I never thought that I'd have to refer. Referee a fight between two Republicans <coughs> on this committee. Well, Mr. Well, Mr. Well, I'm just speaking against the amendment. Chairman, I just think that it goes way too far. Okay. Mr. Chairman, we, we can yeah. stipulate that the people from the, from the left coast are free traders. Oh, they are. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, I would move my amendment. Question comes in the amendment of the gentleman from New York, Mr. Solomon. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Oppose no. 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 What? The no's have it. Question. Well, no, have no. The question comes, I would ask for. Well, my friend asked for a recorded vote. Mr. Solomon's friend requests a recorded vote. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Solomon has a lot of friends on this committee. Well, one, one of his and best Mr. friends requests a Not on this issue. Sure. He, well, Mr. Solomon's been on so many committees, he must be the most popular guy in the House. <coughs> Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Chairman, how often does he change? <laughs> aye. Aye. Mr. Beelens? No. Mr. Frost? No. Mr. Bonnier? No. Mr. Hall? No. Mr. Wheat? Mr. Gordon? No. Ms. Slaughter? Mr. Solomon? Aye. Ah. Mr. Quillen? Aye. Uh, Mr. Dryer? No. What? Mr. Dodd? <laughs> Mr. Chairman? Uh, no. <clears throat> no. Mr. Goss threw me off there. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Oh, Two members having voted in the affirmative, eight in the negative. The motion of the gentleman from New York is not adopted. Mr. Chairman. I will. Clerk, <laughs> no, to vote We're on the, the Gordon Gordon Amendment now. The Gordon Amendment. Mr. Gordon motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Oppose no. The ayes have it. Mr. Chairman, I would insist on a vote on that. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Garrett. Aye. Mr. Beals. Aye. Mr. Frost. Present. Mr. Bonney. Aye. Mr. Hall, Mr. Wheat, Mr. Gordon, aye. Ms. Slaughter, Mr. Solomon, aye. Mr. Quillen, aye. Mr. Dryer, aye. Mr. Doss, aye. Mr. Chairman, aye. Eight members having voted in the affirmative, two in the negative, I mean zero, none in the negative, two uh, present. The motion is not adopted. The Mr. motion Chairman, is adopted. Mr. Chairman, yes. Mr. Quillen. You know, the high regard that I hold for you and always have. Mm hmm But why did we call this meeting at 10 o'clock? <laughs> we heard this rule this afternoon, and why did we do this? Now, it's a serious question. Well, the reason... And I have uh, ever high regard for Mr. you Taylor. and the members well, of the committee the on the other side. This gentleman state the point of our... Mr. Quillen has made his uh, uh, inquiry too late. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I haven't made it too late. I, I really want to know. The reason... I mean, I think it's ridiculous the reason you have members of this committee in here this late when you should have gotten together on what you were going to do. Mr. Quillen, this... You're offering amendments that you're going to make in order in the rule. 
Mr. Quillen. Um, and I've been on this committee longer than most people on the committee. You've been on I, the committee longer than anybody else on the committee. And I don't understand why you call the meeting at 10 o'clock to 9. Well, the, the, it's a very simple explanation. <laughs> we, we had two people representing uh, the majority and minority party that was sitting down trying to iron out the differences so we'd have a rule uh, that would be acceptable to most of the people. Uh, and it took a long time, and it, it's probably still changing right up to now. It's not, I don't call meetings at 10 o'clock. I'd like to call it at 10 o'clock in the morning. But if, unless we have the rule ready, we can't call uh, people. At this morning. Yeah. We, you know, we well, started at 30. Critical but, uh, to you personally. No, I understand that, but the I reason think is this is an operation in frustration, and I don't think that this should occur in this House of Representatives. Obviously, things are not going right, and I think you should think, Mr. Chairman, about a, re a repeat of this committee being brought into such a situation as it is tonight. Well, gentlemen, yield. Mr. Quillen, I don't Quillen. enjoy uh, coming in here at 9, 10, 11, uh, or whatever. Uh, we all have had a very busy day, starting probably at 7.30 this morning. Uh, but we cannot work on a, an authorizing piece of legislation or an appropriations committee unless it's ready to be worked on. And we were told that it would be ready at 6, ready at 7, ready at 8, and finally we, they, they came up around 9.30 and said so it was ready. Well, I, I will. But the point is that the ranking member of the committee called Mr. Solomon and said they were still not in agreement. If they weren't in agreement, why couldn't we have done this earlier? Well, because they were in agreement earlier. Yeah. Will the gentleman yield? I yield to the gentleman from California. I, I, think, that, yeah, I, I think that the uh, distinguished Republican Chairman Emeritus is right on target when he made the statement that we shouldn't be here unless there is some kind of agreement on this issue. And when he said that Mr. Gordon has been offering amendments which are already before the committee, that really is a dilatory tactic. We are not trying to be dilatory. We are offering amendments that have not been included in the rule that has been submitted before us. We simply have requested votes on them, and we could have been out of here nearly an hour ago. If we could have just gone at Surrey Autumn right through those amendments, we would have been able to have those votes. The reason that this broke down was that we had indications that amendments that Republican members had proposed to this committee would be considered. It turns out that those amendments became Bipartisan, but the leadership on those ended up being on the other side of the aisle. Proposals that had come from our membership. And it seems to us that it's a very, very unfair way in which we're treating this, and that's the reason that the whole process is broken down, and I would like to see us go right ahead and vote on the amendments that we have. No reason to vote twice on amendments that are already before the committee. And uh, that's why I, I think that uh, what... Uh, what Chairman Quillen has said is right on target, and I hope very much that we can proceed and uh, make some of these amendments in order. With the, with the yield Happy to yield, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let, let, let me say this, that the motions of the gentleman from Tennessee are in order. And what happens when my motion is adopted, if it is adopted, is merely that those uh, 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 motions and amendments that will pass by the gentleman from Tennessee are merely confirmed uh, by the passage of mine. You know, I understand, none of us like to be here at 11.30 at night, and I understand that, Mr. Quillen, and we all understand that. But, you know, we also are sitting here uh, tonight and, and want those who are interested enough to watch us to understand that we as Democrats are also offering amendments that are included in this rule that are going to cut, cut substantial funds uh, out of this bill. And we give you credit for that and vote on your amendments and, and whether they pass or not, but that you're, you're making that effort. And what we're merely trying to do is to let those who are interested enough to follow the proceedings understand that we also are part of that process. Gentlemen, yield. Uh, um, the gentleman you. I, I, yield yeah, I would uh, respectfully request at this point that uh, that we proceed with the uh, amendment process and, and consider the 
the amendments that have not been uh, offered uh, to date as the Republicans tend to do. And I would ask my good friend uh, from Tennessee, who has been so uh, diligent on this issue, to withhold additional amendments uh, that would be included in the gentleman from Tennessee's motion. And hopefully we can finish this in due time, as the gentleman from California suggested. I thank the gentleman from, uh, are there further amendments? The gentleman from Florida. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I would like to move that we make an order the Goss Amendment number 15. This is the one that's at the top of the bracket that calls for a 20 percent cut in ledge appropriations across the board. I testified before this committee on this today. I guess the easiest way to sum it up is when I left Washington circa 1970, each member of Congress, I believe, had seven in staff. Uh, here we are 24 years later, and each member of Congress has got certainly 18 and sometimes more, and when you add committee staff and interns and part-timers, it's a multiple of three, four times. Uh, what I'm saying is that government has grown exponentially. There's no question about it. Government is too big. Most Americans think that. We, unfortunately, are too big as well. I realize that every person on my staff uh, works hard, and every person on everybody else's staff works hard. And we could have 10 times as much staff and still keep them all occupied. That's the nature of the business. But I honestly believe we ought to think about making a serious cut. This is a heavy cut, I admit it, and there are lesser cuts. But it's in the spirit of making the cut and saying we are, we're getting the message, America, government is too big that I make this. Just quickly, if I may, Porter, um, tell, tell us again, please, what it is that you propose to cut. You're talking about cutting staff it's, here? By uh, I'm basically putting a 20 percent discretionary cut across the whole ledge appropriations. Oh, okay. Not it's just that simple. Okay, across the whole. Yeah, it's the whole thing. It's not just the staff. I, I use that only as an example okay. to sum up my testimony. Question comes on the motion of the gentleman from Florida. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. 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 The no's appear to have it. The motion is not adopted. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Derrick. No. Mr. Davis. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bunn. No. Mr. Hall. Mr. Wheat. Mr. Wood. No. Ms. Slaughter. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Collins. No. Four members haven't voted in the affirmative of six and negative of the motion not adopted. This time I'd like to correct a, 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 an accounting error uh, on the Solomon Amendment. Mr. Solomon did not get two votes and eight against him. Mr. Solomon got three votes oh, and eight well, against him. Uh, that makes me feel much better. Well, well, the last, the, well, the last one was an absentee ballot, and we just got it in. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Since you've said that, may I be recognized to offer a motion? Sorry, I yeah. Are you, gentleman from New York, is recognized. Mr. Chairman, uh, there will be uh, several amendments being offered uh, in the next uh, 50 minutes or so, dealing with uh, a problem that we don't have on this committee, and I have to give you credit for that and, uh, and our Democrat colleagues as well, because uh, I feel, and I think the, uh, all of us on the Republican side feel, that we are treated fairly fairly uh, when it comes to, uh, to staff distribution. I think you put the emphasis on the wrong fairly. <laughs> wrong fairly, well. But uh, many of the uh, committees uh, are not treated fairly, the, the Republican minority. One of those committees uh, is the uh, Committee on Government Operations. One of the new members of this body uh, is John Micah from Florida, uh, who is the brother of uh, a former Democrat uh, congressman who was a classmate of mine named Dan Micah, and a real fine, uh, fine Democrat gentleman. And, but uh, John Micah is very frustrated because the Government Operations Committee is one of those committees that really has a, a, a serious imbalance. Uh, in the distribution of dollars and staff allocation, uh, similar to what is uh, in the, uh, the uh, Energy and Commerce Committee, similar to what is on the Ways and Means Committee. And, you know, the Democrat majority used to use the excuse, well, you Republicans had the White House, so you had all that backup of that staff from the, uh, from the administration uh, to assist you. Well, for the last two years, we haven't had the White House. We haven't had that kind of backup and uh, you folks have on your side of the aisle so the imbalance has gotten ten times worse 
<laughs> Turn the mic up. Uh, but uh, it, it is a serious matter, and uh, uh, what uh, what Mr. Micah is pre is, uh, is proposing uh, requires that funds for salaries and expenses of the Committee on Government Operations be allocated to the majority and minority staffs proportional to the party representation in the House. Now that's a very fair uh, proposal, and uh, let's make it in order. Let's debate that one on the floor. See what happens. Question comes on the amendment of the gentleman from New York. Any discussion? If not, on the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Aye. No. The no's appear to have it. The motion is not adopted. Respectfully. Respectfully, the gentleman requests a uh, call of the roll. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Derrick. No. Mr. Beelins. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bonney. No. Mr. Hall. Mr. Wheat. Mr. Gordon. No. Ms. Slaughter. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Pullen. Mr. Dreyer. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Four members have been voted in the affirmative, six in the negative. The motion of the gentleman from New York is not adopted. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you're going to give me a motion. Number 15, Marcus. I was going to Mr. Chairman, uh, I'd like to move that we consider and block uh, Mr. Ewing's amendments number 23 and 24. What he does here is he provides $1.14 million for the LBJ Congressional Internship Program, and in getting those funds, he calls for reduction by $1.14 million in the funding for investigative staff. There are uh, amendments number 23 and 24. I think it's a balanced uh, proposal that should at least be considered on the House floor. You've heard the motion, gentlemen from California. Any discussion? Any debate? If not, on the motion. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Yeah. Wow. The no's vote, appear Mr. to have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Derrick. No. Mr. Bielens. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bonnier. No. Mr. Hall. Mr. Weed. Mr. Gordon. No. Ms. Slaughter. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Quillen. Aye. Mr. Dry. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Four members have been voting in the affirmative, six in the negative. The motion, the gentleman is not adopted. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dreyer. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I move that we uh, make in order uh, the amendment proposed by our colleague from Washington State, Mrs. Dunn, which calls for a reduction of the funding for committee investigative staff by 4%, which is $2.1 million. This actually breaks out part of the proposal which I had uh, mentioned earlier that uh, has been submitted by our minority leader, Mr. Michael. I think this is a very balanced uh, recommendation which she has made. Four percent is a very modest cut, and I think that this amendment should, uh, at the very least, be considered on the floor. Question comes in the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Aye. No. The no's appear to have a it. A record vote, Clerk Mr. Chairman. Call the roll. Derrick. No. Mr. Bielens. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bonner. No. Mr. Hall. Mr. Wheat. Mr. Gordon. No. Mr. Slaughter. Mr. Solomon. Mr. Solomon. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Quillen. Aye. Mr. Dry. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Four members have been voting in affirmative. Six in the negative. The motion is not adopted. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dreyer. Um, I uh, move that we uh, <coughs> make an order the amendment that was proposed by our uh, colleague from Washington, Mrs. Dunn. Now, one of the things that's been extraordinarily frustrating around here has been the ratio of uh, staffing, especially for investigative staff. And some committees have uh, a one-third allocation for the minority, even though the breakdown of this House is 60% uh, Democrats and 40% Republicans. I'm talking about the, now the 104th Congress when I say 60% Republicans, but right now, only 40% Republicans, and the one-third investigative staff would, I believe, be a very balanced way for us to look at this question of uh, investigation, and uh, Ms. Dunn's amendment requires that one-third of investigative funds made available for each committee be expended at the discretion of the ranking minority member of the committee, so it gives the minority a little greater opportunity, and I think that we should at least have an opportunity to debate that on the House floor. Question comes on the motion. General from California, are all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The no's appear to have it. The no's have it. We have a record vote, call Mr. Chairman. Roll. Mr. Derrick. No. Mr. Bielinson. No. Mr. Frost. Okay. No. Mr. Bonner. I thought you Mr. Hall. Mr. Wheat. Mr. Gordon. No. Ms. Slaughter. Mr. Solomon. Jerry. Mr. Solomon. You want to vote aye? Aye. 
Mr. Pola. Aye. Mr. Dreyer. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Four members have been voting affirmative, of six in the negative motion of the gentleman is not Chairman, adopted. I have a amendment. Number 27 by Mr. Blue. Reduces official mailing for 1.5 for address. Previous transfer of up to 25,000 from other office accounts to the official mail account. Previous unsolicited mail within 60 days of the election and directs at all. Unspent funds will be returned to the treasury. It's a good amendment, and I think it's worthy of support. The uh, members have heard the motion. Gentleman, Tennessee, Mr. Quillen, on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 The no's appear to have it. The no's have it. The motion is not Order adopted. Rolls. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Derrick. No. Mr. Bielan. No. Mr. Cross. No. Mr. Bonner. No. Mr. Hall. Mr. Wheat. Mr. Gordon. No. Ms. Slaughter. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Quillen. Aye. Mr. Dreyer. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Worse. Four members having voted in the affirmative, six in the negative. The motion of the gentleman of Tennessee is not adopted. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dreyer. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I mentioned earlier that uh, our distinguished Republican leader, Mr. Michael, who is going to uh, be retiring after uh, many years of service to uh, this institution and to the government, the military, and as a staff member of the Congress, uh, uh, has offered a very thoughtful amendment which requires a 4% cut in the full-time employees for positions from the September 30, 1995 level and from the September 30, 1996 level in each of the following areas. I think this is a very modest and balanced proposal for cuts in the House and Senate, the Architect, the Capitol Police, the Congressional Budget Office, the Copyright Tribunal, the General Accounting Office, the Government Printing Office, the Office of Technology Assessment, and the Library of Congress. In our Joint Committee on the Organization of Congress, we spent a great deal of time looking at these issues of support agencies and other areas, and uh, we had amendments that came forward from freshman Republicans which called for a 25% cut in these areas. This is extraordinarily modest. Mr. Michael, who uh, I believe uh, maintains a great deal of respect from both sides of the aisle, certainly should receive the support of members on this committee for at least consideration of his amendment, which would call for a very modest 4% reduction. And I move the amendment, Mr. Chairman. The amendment of California, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. I think we've won that one. The ayes seem to have had that, or? Did we win that? Oh, they did. Then we have a record vote on that, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, well, if we couldn't get 4%, then I would like to offer en bloc the two Ramstead amendments, number 28 and 29. One requires across the board cutting of 2.7%, per, uh, and the other requires across the board cut of 5.7%. In the interest of time, I'm willing to make them en bloc. It's perfectly clear that we are trying any way we can to save the taxpayers some money and cut the size of government. Gentlemen, yield. Surely. Uh, I'd just like to ask my friend, uh, is it not correct that under the standing rules of the House, these cutting amendments would be made in order if rather than going through this long and drawn out process of all kinds of waivers that we would uh, in fact be able to consider this amendment on the House floor? You know, uh, reclaiming my time, I believe the gentleman from California is absolutely correct and I think there's no necessary requirement that this be heard or the opportunity to be taken advantage of before one of the committees or subcommittees or the main committee of appropriations. Very worthwhile, and we should at least give our, uh, our colleague, Mr. Ramstead, a chance to do this on the House floor, and I'd support the gentleman's amendment. Yeah, I, I think Mr. Dreyer has made a very solid point. If we weren't strangulating ourselves here with this rule, uh, I think this is the kind of thing we'd see on the floor and you'd probably get pretty good lively debate on. So I make the motion in order. And rather than ask the question, Mr. Dreyer, you could have C-SPAN roll back a couple of <laughs> hours, and I think you've asked the same question twice. And in fact, if you, if you need any help in, in jogging your memory, I, I've got a great course for you. 
Instant replay is one of the advantages of Did television. The, uh, I just want to clarify on this particular amendment. I don't think we discussed it earlier on the Ramstad amendment. Uh, there may have been no, another you, cutting you amendment that might have been made. The procedure. In order. Yeah, the procedure, because uh, cutting amendments actually would be made in order under the uh, uh, under an open rule. Yeah. Yeah. Even those that don't have to go before the committee. Right. That's right. That's, that's right. amazing. Would, would the gentleman rule, yield? Right? I'm happy to yield. I'll just point out that uh, if either of these amendments passed, uh, number 29 requires an across-the-board cut of 2.7 percent, uh, and the uh, number 30 requires an across-the-board cut of 5.7 percent. If either of those amendments passed singularly, individually, uh, it would reduce this bill down the uh, 1,800, uh, the 1 1.8 billion, which is almost $2,000 million. It would reduce it down to below last year's cost. Well, I think that's a very important point that Mr. Solomon has made. I'm almost to ask for a uh, division of the two amendments, but in the, to save time, I won't do that tonight. Uh, if the gentleman wishes to make that request, I will reconsider my motion. No, that's okay. I, I would. Uh, I, I will say one thing, though. Mr. Solomon makes a very good point. Uh, Mr. Gordon probably made a good point that we have tried to reduce the number of personnel. And I think that's very good, and we all should take credit for that effort. Uh, it's hard work to do that kind of thing, and it's not easy. On the other hand, having done that, the price is still going up. Uh, and the chairman confirmed that in his testimony today, that even though we have less employees, we still have greater cost because of the additional benefits packages that those employees have. So to say that we are having less personnel does not necessarily mean that there's a smile for the taxpayers. So, But, but I Mr. Think uh, Goss, if you could, that's across, that's across the board. That includes the Library of Congress, which keeps oh. all the books. I uh, agree, well, Mr. Gordon. Well, I, this doesn't necessarily increase. include that if the gentleman would yield sure. on that point. Uh, you know, to, to conclude that it would have a direct impact no, no, on the no, Library no. of Congress, That's which has all the books. Well you, well, you just said that. You no, said it no, would no, affect it would. the well, area that has all those books. Thank it's you, Mr. Dreyer, but cut. I think I know what no, I said. I, uh, I don't I need think you. That Mr. I think Mr. Goss has yielded. I, I Maybe we should have C-SPAN to roll this thing back. No, I now yield to Mr. Gordon. Well, I would hope it would include the Library of Congress and everybody else. Well, we just tried that in the Michael Amendment. We didn't get very far, so now I'm trying the across the board, if the gentleman right. from Tennessee well, I guess understands. What you were mentioning that the, um, that the number of employees in the legislative branch has gone down steadily over the last few years, and that's the case. Yet the overall um, expense of the, of the legislative branch has gone up. The point that I was trying to make is that's not necessarily a complete function of salaries in that the legislative branch also includes the Library of Congress, which is the repository of all the books, I guess, in, in this country and elsewhere, the, uh, the Capitol and other historic type monuments. And so um, the, the increase is not just a function of salaries, but of other types of services within this legislative branch. I mentioned that, Thank but I, I think the testimony from the chairman today was that the, the benefits packages because uh, were largely responsible because we were, in fact, talking about creating a new position for the nurses in another amendment we're going to be addressing shortly, which is a higher uh, position, uh, requires higher pay and higher benefits, which is why I'd ask the question. But I think the point is made, and I think we should have the vote unless there's further conversation, Mr. Chairman. Aye. Respectfully ask for a quarter vote, Mr. Chairman. Mr. This is the amendment for consideration of the uh, Ramstead. Aye. 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 I'm offering this one. No, we're going to do that one back again. Yeah. Paul has a motion to confirm it in the five and the negative. Are there further motions? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have a, uh, a motion that I would like to offer. Mr. Schaefer from Colorado has proposed that we bring about a reduction of all committee funding by 25 percent. Now, having gone through the uh, debate here, there are some who might think that that's rather excessive, but the new members of Congress who came uh, to this House, uh, uh, came before our Joint Committee in the Organization of Congress, and many of them proposed that we have a 25 percent reduction in committee staff funding. 
One of the reasons for this is that we have seen uh, real abuse on the part of uh, the majority staff in many instances, and it seems to me that this 25 percent reduction should be at least included on the House floor as we proceed with debate, and I move that we make it in order, Mr. Chairman. You've heard the motion of the gentleman from California. Is there further discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. No. No's have it. Can no's appear to have it. Mr. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Derrick. No. Mr. Bielenson. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bonner. No. Mr. Hall. Mr. Wheat. Mr. Gordon. No. Mr. Slaughter. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Quillen. Aye. Mr. Dreyer. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Beelers. Four having voted in the affirmative and five in the negative, the motion fails. Are there further motions? Mr. Mr. Chairman, Goss? thank you. We appear to be going in the right way, judging by the closeness of the votes here, so I'm going to try another one of these uh, cutting amendments. This is Mr. Thomas's of Wyoming Amendment Number 33, reducing the funding for GAO by about 15 percent from 439 million to 373 million. It speaks for itself. I make the motion. You've heard the motion of the gentleman from Florida. Is there further discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. No. no. No's have it. No's Respectfully ask for a record vote, Mr. Chairman. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Derrick. No. Mr. Beelins. No. Mr. Frost. No. <clears throat> Mr. Bonner. No. Mr. Hall. Mr. Wheat. Mr. Gordon. No. Mr. Slaughter. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Quillen. Aye. Mr. Dreyer. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Chairman. Four having voted in the affirmative and five in the negative, the motion fails. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Gentleman from Florida. Since we're holding at that level, I'll still take another shot at it. This is a, an en bloc amendment that I move that we make in order. It's number, uh, Goss number 34 and Goss number 35, and I want to explain it very briefly. I am going to be very serious just for a second. We did a survey of the attending physician's office, and for a year, it was uh, mid-91 to mid-92. You might be interested to know that that office served 92,925 people. And I think the most important part of that is that only 17% of those people were members. Only 7% of those handling cases were members. The others were visitors, staff, and, and other associated people. The second uh, on the Hill. The other point that I want to make is that that office was set up as an emergency office. And of those same cases, 92,925 contacts that that office did, 651 were emergency in that period. So we have gotten way far away from what that office was originally set up for. Now, I want to be the first person to say I have nothing but admiration. I have nothing but fabulous experience there the few times I've had to go there uh, for serious uh, health matters that turned out not to be serious. Um, and I think that it's something that we all uh, want to uh, respect and uh, face up to the fact that we've got a great service there. There is not understanding about it in the country. There are some people who feel that we are taking much better care of ourselves than we are taking care of them when it comes to health services. It is for that reason uh, knowing that this subject will be part of the health care debate, which we know is going to consume much of the summer, that I am suggesting that we go back to the original purpose of the attending physician's office, to applaud the office for the great job it does, the nurses, the doctors, the staff, all the people who are involved in it, but to thin it down to 50 percent of its current level and return it to its emergency, uh, to its emergency status. That's what it was meant for, and it has only grown uh, as a convenience to visitors, staffers, and employees of the Hill as well on a very low percentage use basis to the members. But the perception is it's a special perk for us. And I think we can set the record straight by cutting it a bit. Mr. Chairman. Uh, the gentleman from uh, Texas. Uh, and I didn't hear all the gentleman's uh, comments, but uh, uh, did the gentleman acknowledge the fact that uh, those of us who, uh, who use the office pay an annual fee? We are billed annually. It's, uh, it's like an HMO. I send a check each year. I don't, I don't even remember oh, I, how, who the check's made out to, but I write a check each year, a fairly substantial check for the privilege of being able to have a physician uh, pr present here at the uh, Capitol uh, for matters uh, of health. Yes, and indeed I, I'm very happy to mention that. I think it's part of the case that needs to be made on behalf of Congress and members of Congress that in fact we do pay something, uh, and I think we pay a proportionate amount that certainly justifies the emergency service with this type of staffing and the type of uh, facility that would remain available, I think you would get your money's worth, and I think it would still be a, a reasonable uh, expenditure 
uh, of you as a member or me as a member, but I think that the perception that would be in America is that we weren't getting a special deal would be very much correct. The gentleman did not uh, mean to suggest that this was entirely free to the members. Oh, not at all. So I've never have suggested that. Uh, what I am saying is that what it appears to be here is a very special benefit that most Americans cannot get at their workplace or in any other circumstance. That's all I am saying, that the only way you get this kind of very good service is by being a member of Congress. Sure. Sure. The motion of the gentleman from uh, Florida. Is there further discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? No. No appear to have it. Respectfully no. ask for a quarter vote, Mr. Chairman. Call the roll. No. Mr. Beelan. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Hall. No. Mr. Wheat. No. Mr. Gordon. No. Mr. Slaughter. Mr. Solomon. No. Mr. Quillen. No. Mr. Dreyer. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Three members having voted in the affirmative, seven and then negative of the motion, the gentleman from Florida is not adopted. Mr. Thank you, Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dreyer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move that we make an order the uh, amendment proposed by my uh, colleague from California, Mr. Thomas, who is the ranking uh, Republican on the Administration Committee and has spent a great deal of time looking at, at these issues. His amendment number 37 sets the maximum statutory mail allowance at the first class postage rate multiplied by twice the number of eligible district addresses rather than the current three times allotment for the number of addresses. His goal, of course, is to reduce the ability of members to continue to send that tremendous flow of mail into uh, to members of Congress. Uh, unfortunately, it's uh, turned out to be uh, really a campaign benefit in many instances for incumbent members of Congress, diminishing the opportunities for challengers to overcome that. I think that Mr. Thomas has uh, worked long and hard on this and has a very balanced uh, approach which allows members to communicate with the people whom they represent, but at the same time uh, does not allow for excessive mailings. And I move that we make the amendment in order so we can debate it on the House floor. The question comes on the motion of Mr. Dreyer of California. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Aye. No. The no's appear to have it. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Durr. No. Mr. Bielens. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bunner. Is this the way? Mr. Hall. Mr. Weeks. Mr. Gordon. No. Ms. Slaughter. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Quillen. Aye. Mr. Dreyer. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Four members haven't voted in the affirmative, six in the negative. The motion is not adopted. <coughs> Mr. Solomon. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, uh, I think we're about to move to a final Jerry, vote. microphone on, Jerry. <coughs> Appreciate that very much. Uh, Could I have that figure? Just to... no, mm, about 100, yeah. right. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, uh, we're about to move to a final vote on this, uh, this rule, and uh, I really am disappointed. If the... Uh, the 12 amendments that are being made in order were to successfully pass on the floor, we would cut, according to my calculations, about $100 million out of this, uh, this budget. Uh, Mr. Uh, Fazio, when he was here, the chairman of the uh, subcommittee, testified that uh, this bill was $107 million over last year's spending. So even if we were to successfully pass all these amendments, we would actually still be spending more on us. That means that we'd be spending $1.8 billion in this next fiscal year on the operation of the United States House of Representatives uh, and its affiliates. And that does not include the Senate. This bill does not include the Senate's legislative appropriation bill, which has to be added to this uh, at some point. Um, I just cannot support the rule. Uh, uh, I would just... Uh, hope that uh, we can defeat the rule when it comes on the floor and then uh, have an open amending process that will allow every member, all 435 members of this body, to participate in writing the legislative bill for the operation of their Congress. Having said that, uh, I will yield back the balance of my time. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Chairman, may I ask a question about one of the amendments that uh, Mr. Derrick referred to, and I think Mr. Gordon referred to it. It was the Strickland Amendment that's in the approved list, that's in the bill that's before us. This uh, eliminates 6,580, 
$6,580,000 for six new elevators in the Longworth building. Uh -huh. And this, was, uh, this step uh, was made at Democrat initiative. Uh, am I correct in that? That this was a Democrat initiative to remove this, these elevators. Is that fair? Mr. Strickland? Mr. Strickland's a Democrat. Uh, may I, I ask? I don't know the genesis of the amendment. Uh, thank you. May I ask? May I ask who made the request for the new elevators? Who put the elevators in the budget that were taking them out? Uh, I, I, I have no idea. Oh. oh, I see. So yeah. these are Republican elevators that the Democrats are taking out. Is that what this is? Okay, I just want to know. <laughs> Only in Kentucky did they come up. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Hey, here, that was all right. <laughs> would, would the gentleman rather have escalators? Uh, the gentleman doesn't spend much time in Longworth, so I was asking like these penetrating stairs. questions for that reason. Thank you. I'll move the previous question. May I say something, Mr. Chairman? No. This is something I happen to know about. Okay. Mr. Billington. My first term here, I li uh, my office was on the seventh floor of Longworth. I did not once take an elevator. Uh, by the end of my second year, I figured I'd walked up and down about 2,200 times. I practically destroyed my knees. It was, I thought it would be of value to my health. It was not. I, whether or not these are adequate elevators, I'm not sure, but I think we should have elevators there. I was going to comp the gentleman. more sensible folks. I was going to compliment the gentleman on his fitness. These, these elevators come down a lot faster than they go up. Mr. Chairman, I moved the previous question. <laughs> Evidently, you're not interested in elevators. You were correct. <laughs> question comes in the motion of the gentleman from South Carolina, Mr. Derrick. No. <laughs> All those in favor, say aye. 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 Now, Jerry. No. But those opposed. Oh, <laughs> oh, Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Derrick. Uh -huh. Mr. Beal. Aye. Mr. Frost. Present. Aye. Mr. Hall, Mr. Wheat, Mr. Gordon. Aye. Ms. Slaughter, Mr. Solomon. No. Mr. Quillen. No. Mr. Gordon. Mr. Goss. Mr. Gordon. No. Mr. Chairman. No. Aye. 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 Aye.
This has been live coverage of a House Rules Committee hearing on a legislative branch spending bill. A Rules Committee decides the guidelines on how debate on a bill is held in the House. Members considered a $1.9 billion bill for congressional operations, including funding for the Library of Congress, General Accounting Office, and Government Printing Office. The bill now goes to the full House for debate. You can see this hearing again in its entirety later around 4.30 Eastern Time on C-SPAN. Now to the United Nations headquarters in New York City for a news briefing held today by...